photo editing can get nasty, but video editing, that shit can just go out of hand real fast, man. And honestly, ain't nobody got time for that. But it doesn't have to, especially if you're using CapCut, which in my opinion is sort of like a unicorn because it's free, it's without any ads, very easy to use, but at the same time, it's powerful if you want it to be. And no wonder it's the top app uh, on the App Store. It's so popular because it basically does it all. It's kind of like an all-in-one video editing tool that is specifically designed for mobile platforms, including iPads, and also it supports editing on the computer. But we're gonna look at the mobile app. I know this is gonna sound a little bit like a commercial, but if you're one of those people who are reluctant of shooting videos because you don't want to deal with all that editing mess, honestly, just let me show you through six main features of CapCut why I think would make it very easy for you to step into the world of video editing and trust me it doesn't have to be overwhelming you can learn what it's about and most importantly it would allow you to showcase your work so you can grow on different platforms as we know nowadays that's a big deal right now and this is the video clip that we're going to be working on i literally threw it together in a couple of minutes with the clips that i sh and photos that i shot previously so just check it out This is exactly what the app can do and you will be able to do as well. For full transparency, even though this video is sponsored by CapCut, what I say here are truly my thoughts and I do stand by the claim that I personally think this is the best free editing tool on mobile, especially if you're a beginner. So if you wanna learn a thing or two, then let's go. All right, let's start with the first feature, templates versus manual editing. And so, if you're very, very new to editing and do not want to do anything yourself, this thing is definitely for you. So you, what you have to do is just use the templates. All you got to do is simply add a couple of videos or photos as well. And then the CapCut automatically analyzes the content and offers different templates that you can choose from. And if you're by any means, if you're not happy with the ones that, that they are presented, you can just simply refresh and get new ones and also can change the, like the music if you don't like it in the background. Yeah, so this is basically a very powerful tool to spit out tons of content, literally with just a few taps if you don't wanna spend a lot of time on it. However, if you want to take things into full control, you can also do manual editing by just, I'll go back, so simply, but just by hitting the new project. Again, similarly like before, you can select the clips or the photos that you want to work with, and all of them are added to the timeline, the ones that you selected, where the editing can begin, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Let's look at the first thing, editing tools, and this does not have to be in any way overwhelming or overly complicated. You can easily go by with just two buttons, which are split and delete. That's how simple the tool is. From there on, you can simply change the sequence of your videos, just move them around, also the photos, of course. Of course, You can uh, change the, the length, for example, by dragging these little handles at the beginning or the end. You just have to select the file first. And uh, yeah, you can also split the clips in half where you don't want them to be longer and you know just delete the parts that you don't want um, to exclude from the video. Moving on. After you're done with the basic editing, let's spice things up a little, shall we? You can easily do that by using some really cool transitions. And honestly, it still blows my mind that CapCut is so up to date with the transition styles, unlike something like um, Premiere Pro where the default transitions feel like they're a little bit from the 90s or something. Let's just throw a couple of uh, transitions here. Uh, as you can see, they have many of them and you can just check out and it gives a little bit of a preview here. Obviously, a lot of them are a bit cheesy and you should definitely avoid using too many transitions too often. So they don't take away from the story. However, using one once in a while, it's uh, totally fine. My personal favorites are under the sections camera, for example, this left or old film, as well as pull in or pull out. Those are really powerful transitions, so use selectively. Animations is something I really love to use with photos. I honestly don't think it, it works too well with videos, but for photos, it gives a really great impact when you want to introduce an image. Uh, together with the music, by the way, where there's like a beat on, on or, a, you know, just to make a bit of a hit. Um, shake, 
uh, shake zoom and pendulum are one of my favorites to use and you see you can also edit the length of the effect and when it should start or end definitely try out different effects and remember again be subtle and be careful when you combine a transition with the animation so it just doesn't feel too much altogether you know and then there's speed uh, this thing works only for videos uh, you can speed things up or slow them down but what I really like to do uh, to make an impact on the motion in the video I like to use these curves also called speed ramps there are a lot of uh, predefined curves but the best thing is that you can actually edit that curve all you have to do is just hit the edit and you will see these points you can also select them uh, drag them down if you want to slow down or drag up if you want to speed up that particular part uh, you can add even more beats or these nodes as I call them to make more sense or so it fits better with your music of course you can also make it smoother or there's a couple of option, options better quality or faster process I'm pretty sure you've noticed speed ramping as it's really popular with these car videos and just in general it really helps to transition from one scene to the other one but again be careful of how you use a speed ramp especially together with the transition or an animation sometimes less is more but of course it's amazing to have all of these options and as you can see with just a couple of taps and effects you could easily make your video look like they are made by very experienced video editor not this one is not made by a experienced video editor it's just me okay and the, and the third feature that simply honestly blows my mind is text-to-speech it is just so perfect at least for those who speak english it works so damn well let me demonstrate here's a little clip where i'm talking about something and then it just i go to text tap on auto captions um, and then i just click start it does a bit of loading and then i have some subtitles here okay done just click done and just click check mark again and here you go look how amazing this is how cool is that imagine how much time it saves you by not having to type and animate those words in and if you want to change them ah, you just click on literally that box where the where the thing is and you can change the text to something else that you that you want this is a major time saver and here's the best part if you want to add text yourself go ahead my friend add stickers if that's what you're up to you can also have auto lyrics draw and whatnot i mean this thing is just packed with features and what i what i really like to do because i don't like how the default text looks like i think it's a bit uh, outdated i like to edit the style so you just hit style and then simply choose from different fonts or um, whatever i'm just gonna se select some font um, Oswald for example just to make it more readable you will know for yourself how to do it tell me how cool is that all right and one of the last features is color grading and I'm pretty sure you've heard a lot of people having a big struggle regarding this nevertheless it doesn't have to be very complicated you know because it actually can be easy first I must mention this depending on what kind of footage you are editing for example if it's your phone footage remember that most likely it's already color corrected color corrected not color graded that means that all the shadows and highlights and colors are fine but you can give a bit of artistic touch to it and you can do that by going to the filters and let's go to filters and actually on the top you can see you have two parts you have filters and adjust if you want to just get some specific look go through these filters go through these categories and you'll see how your video changes but if you want to either do your own color grading from scratch or adjust the look that is here you can use the filters as a base and then you can simply work with all of these editing tools like you would be working in any other video or actually photo editing app just remember that you are going to lose some quality since most likely this is not a raw footage unless you are shooting in something like an S-Log3 or something you know you'll definitely going to be losing a bit of quality so again like with everything else I just mentioned in this video be careful do not overdo and don't push all those sliders to the max don't be aggressive like that because nasty artifacts are going to show up and just going to ruin the quality of your video 
And lastly, you have to add some cool music if you want your videos to pop. <laughs> Not obligatory, but let me show you how it's done. So basically you tap on audio, then you hit on sounds, and from here on you have a bunch of different categories and options to pick from. Uh, just see what you like, listen to the sounds, hit on a plus icon and it's going to add the audio to your timeline. Obviously you can edit this audio clip by using all the traditional editing tools. You can obviously just you know split it into parts and cut off the unnecessary things. Um, move it where you want it to be, you can make voice effects, change the volume, of course, um, the length of the clip and so on, you know, just make it match to your video. By the way, you can also add sound effects and this is something I really recommend. Um, that gives just an extra impact to your videos. For example, the swoosh sound effect is really nice for the transitions, so I'm gonna go to the transitions here and just select uh, whatever this one. Listen again to the watch which ones you like and add it. And uh, of course you need to add it r on the right place in the timeline. So where the transition is happening, for example, here. And we are good to go. From there on, you would simply export it and upload to your favorite social platform or just save it on your phone. Um, remember that you can use all of these sounds anywhere you want and on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. And you know, this is perhaps like 10% of what the CapCut can do. You can definitely go a lot more in depth, but the point is not to overwhelm yourself and, and just start slow. If you feel like you've grown out of the parts that you just saw in this video, experiment a little bit more and see what else it offers because there's just so many cool features for you to explore. And remember, it's free, there are no ads, so definitely give it a try. Go download it in your App Store or Play Store, play around, create your first video, even if you don't shoot videos, even if it's made purely from the photos, and share the content on social media and tag me so I can see it as well. I will see you in the next video very, very soon, and of course, don't forget to keep on creating.